This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Inventory. Now, in the earlier chapters, uh, when we dealt with the purchase of goods and the sale of goods, you may have been a bit worried about what was happening to inventory. What about a record for inventory? Well, in this chapter, in chapter 8, uh, we'll look through the um, accounting entries. And it may look strange, but it's because uh, we're doing things manually. We're not using computers. With computers, things might look a bit different, and I'll explain that afterwards. But let's look, first of all, at what the accounting entries will be. And the way we'll do it is by looking at three very short examples. By the time we've finished the three examples, you'll have all the actual uh, accounting entries, the debit credits, that you'll need. So, if you turn to page 59, we'll look first of all at example 1. And in fact, example 1 has no inventory at all, but be patient with me. Um, example 1, it says in year 1, at the first year of trading, a business had purchases of $20,000, sales of $30,000, and there was no inventory at the end of the period. And what we're going to do, part A, first of all, let's look at what the trading account will look like. The trading account, remember, is just the first bit of the income statement. And so on a pretty income statement or trading account, we'd say we've got sales. Sorry, this is example one. We've got sales of 30,000. We deduct the cost of sales. Well, here there are no inventories, so whatever we bought was sold. The purchases were 20000 And therefore, of course, the gross profit is 10000 So very easy, no problem. However, although that's what we want to end up with, uh, remember it's the bookkeeper records each transaction and at the end of the year, as accountant, we'll actually produce the trading statement. So let's do the recording. Uh, first of all, uh, we made purchases of 20000 When we buy goods for 20000 the bookkeeper will debit purchases with 20000 They'll credit cash or payables if they're on credit, but debit purchases of 20 Sales of 30, well again debit cash or debit receivables, but credit sales with 30. At the end of the year we close off the accounts. Well of course both purchases and sales appear in the income statement. We open up an income statement T account. We move the purchases to income statement, so credit purchases, debit income statement with 20,000. And we move the sales to income statement, debit sales, credit income statement with 30. Uh, the balance on purchases and on sales is zero. We can use the same T accounts next year to record next year's sales and purchases. And of course, finally, the balance on the income statement is 10,000. And that is the profit for the year. And of course, in practice, it's at that stage you'd do a pretty income statement. We've already done it. We know sales 30, cost of sales 20. There is the profit. So nothing new there at all. That's very simple revision of chapter 3. Uh, and there was no inventory. But now let's make it slightly more interesting. Can you turn over? And we'll look at example 2. Example 2, it's the same business, but it's the second year. In the second year, purchases of 25,000, sales of 34. 
and this time there was inventory at the end of the period. Well again, first of all let's forget debits credits, let's work out what the profit is by doing a pretty income statement or again the top bit of it to gross profit is the trading account. Uh, we've got sales 34,000 to get the profit we deduct the cost of sales and the cost of sales well with no opening inventory so we take all our purchases during the year we bought goods for 25 but this time of course they weren't all sold some of those goods were still left at the end of the year so deduct from there the closing inventory at the end of the year which was 4,000 and if 4,000 were still left only the remaining 21,000 were actually sold so the cost of sales 21 they were sold for 34 it gives us a gross profit of 13,000 so that's what we want to end up with but again, let's turn to part B. Let's repeat the exercise, but this time let's play bookkeeper, record the transactions and see how we actually end up with that profit. Bookkeeper first. We buy goods for 25. Credit cash debit purchases, 25,000. That's all the bookkeeper did in um, chapter 3. That's all the bookkeeper will do here. Every time we buy goods, we make a record. Uh, we made sales of 34. Debit cash, credit sales, 34. And again, that's all the bookkeeper will have done. Bookkeeper's job, record all the purchases, record all the sales. We come to the end of the year we want to close off the accounts and so open up our income statement purchases appear on the income statement so move them credit purchases debit income statement 25,000 sales appear on the income statement debit sales credit income statement with 34,000 exactly as before and of course the purchase account is now clear we could use the same account next year the sales account is clear however very obviously we've got a, pro a problem in fact we've got two problems the first problem of course is if we stop there the balance on the income statement is 9,000 and yet, of course, we know the profit should be 13. The second problem, now slightly less obvious, but the second problem is that we've got inventory at the end of the year of 4,000. Inventory is an asset. We want it to appear on the balance sheet. But we can't have 4,000 on a balance sheet unless there's a balance somewhere of 4,000. Well, the solution is wonderful. It's the accountant's job to sort this out. And so at the end of the year, the accountant finds this inventory of 4,000, wants it on the balance sheet, so we need a balance. The accountant creates one. The accountant opens up a new account called inventory and creates the balance we want. The end of the year, the balance we want 4,000 it's an asset we want a debit balance and so the accountant debits an inventory account with 4,000 we need a double entry but of course the double entry we will credit the income statement and we've now solved both problems because on the income statement what balance are we left with? 13,000 
and of course we've already checked that is the correct profit and we could now rewrite the income statement in the pretty fashion we know all the figures sales purchases inventory sales purchases inventory we can rewrite it nicely but the profit of course is correct at 13 finally on the inventory count, we have a balance of 4,000. It's a debit balance and asset. That will appear on the balance sheet, the statement of financial position. And like all balance sheet items, we'll leave the balance there. Just that one entry, create the inventory we want credit the income statement, we get the right profit, we get the right asset for the balance sheet. All right, for completeness, let's do one more year. Can you turn to example three, where we've got the same business again, but this time in the third year? And in year three, the business had purchases of 38, it had sales of 50, there's inventory at the end of year three of 6,000. But remember, because it's the same business as before, in example two, at the end of year two, we'd got inventory of 4,000. And so we start year three with opening inventory of 4,000. So again, for the last time, let's first of all do our trading account and work out what profit we want to end up with. The trading account, we've got sales for the year. 50,000. The cost of sales, well this time we did start the year with 4,000 in inventory, with opening inventory of 4,000. That was already sat in the warehouse waiting to be sold. During the year we made more purchases another 38,000 and so we've now got 42,000 available for sale. However it wasn't all sold because out of that 42,000 some was still left at the end. The closing inventory 6,000 and so 40, uh, 42 deduct what's still left 6 it means that the cost of what actually left the building must have been 36,000 and therefore a gross profit of 14,000. So there's what we're going to end up with. But yet again, let's now do the debits credits and see how we get there. Let's open up our T accounts. Last year we had a purchases account, but at the end of the year the balance was zero we start this year with a balance of zero. And similarly sales. Zero balance at the end of last year, zero balance at the beginning of this year. However, we also, did we not, have a, had an inventory account. And at the end of last year, we debited that with 4,000 and we left the balance there because it appeared in the balance sheet. And so we start this year with a balance of 4,000. Uh, finally, we've got our income statement T account. We're going to work out the profit. Now let's play bookkeeper. First of all, we buy goods for 38. So credit, cash, debit, purchases, 38,000. Sales of 50, so debit, cash, credit, sales, 50. And the bookkeeper's finished. That's all the bookkeeper does. The bookkeeper may have noticed the inventory account, but nothing to do with the pure bookkeeping. Um, there was 4,000 at the beginning of the year, that balance just stays there all year. We arrive at the end of the year to produce our financial statements. 
And what do we do? Purchases appears in the income statement, so move them. Credit purchases, debit income statement, 38. Similarly, sales. Debit sales, credit income statement, with 50. And of course, the purchases account, the sales account. We're left with zero balance, ready for next year. However, again, we can't stop there. Because, were we to stop there with inventory of 4,000 for the balance sheet, and yet, of course, we know it's not 4,000 at the end of the year, it's 6. And also the income statement. If we stopped there, we've got a balance, a profit of 12,000. Uh, and yet we know, do we not, that the correct profit is 14. To sort it out, we make two entries. First of all, on inventory with 4,000, that's the opening inventory. It was correct at the beginning of the year, but of course that inventory will all have been sold. And so first of all, we remove the opening inventory. We credit the inventory with 4,000. We debit the income statement. The opening inventory. The balance on inventory, of course, is now zero. And we're now in the position we were at the end of last year. We've got zero balance. We know the inventory at the end of the year is 6,000. We create the balance we want. We debit inventory with 6,000. And there's our asset for the balance sheet. We credit the income statement. The closing inventory. 6,000. Sorry, I'm running out of space. That's 6,000. And we've now achieved what we want. The balance on the inventory account, I hope, is obviously 6,000. Uh, and that's our asset, a debit balance. It's an asset for the balance sheet, a current asset. We'll leave the balance there. It's still there at the beginning of next year. The income statement, the balance on the income statement. Forty two fourteen thousand. There is our profit. Uh, and of course, we'd already worked out with a pretty income statement. We know that that is the correct profit. And there we are. It's just those two entries. Uh, in general terms, the two entries, at the end of the year, we remove the opening inventory, credit inventory, debit income statement. We then create the closing inventory, debit inventory, credit income statement. The two entries, they print at the bottom of 60, page 61, but it is simply those two entries. And do note two things. Firstly, the inventory account does not keep, I'll write down because it's so important, the inventory account does not keep a day-by-day -day record of inventory. Uh, it's only correct at the end of the period. Clearly, day by day, the inventory will be going up and down. You buy goods, you sell goods. The inventory keeps changing. But in the T accounts, we don't, do not keep a day by day record. We record all the purchases. We record all the sales. 
but the inventory account is only correct at the end of the year. Now the reason that does upset some people is because with computers things can be different. It depends on the accounting software uh, but generally with computers that entry we've just made effectively the computer can do that every time we have a transaction. With computers uh, we the software does tend to keep a day-by-day -day record of inventory however when we're doing it by hand that just would not be realistic we may keep separate records for our own purposes but when you're doing it by hand in the actual T accounts we don't record the inventory day by day it's only correct at the end of the period because we put in the figure we want uh, a second point, uh, here we had inventory at the beginning of the year of 4 and at the end of the year we want it to be 6. It may have occurred to you, you could end up with 6 just by, if you like, putting an extra 2,000. It would work. However, it's bad practice. Strictly, remove the opening, create the closing. The reason being is that we do our t-account first, but when we come to do our pretty income statement, all the figures are here. We know sales, we know opening inventory, purchases, closing inventory. So on the pretty income statement, all we're doing is rewriting the figures. Clearly we must get to the same profit. Finally though, where did that four thousand uh, sorry six thousand come from? Here it came from the question, obviously, but in real life, where would we get the six thousand from to be able to make the entry? Well, the answer is we go and physically count the inventory, even if we do have any records, it's too important. We must check we get that figure right. And so, what will happen is at the end of the period, we will actually count how many items we have in inventory, we'll value them, and whatever figure we come to, here's 6,000, we'll put it through the accounts. And so, although be aware of these entries we've just been through, they are unlikely actually to be examined in the exam, far more importantly, and what we'll look at in the next section is how we actually go about valuing our inventory. So we'll have a pause, but then we'll carry on with valuation.